no rest for the uh, for the weary, I guess they say, Coach. Uh, Forty eight hours uh, between games. So how do you how do you get prepared on a short turnaround like this? And does it help that you played this Duke team just a few days ago? It does help that we played them recently. Um, in regards to there are not a lot of games that we have to watch to to, to scout them because you know uh, we've only played a couple games since then. So that helps the coaching staff out in that regards of seeing what they're running if they added anything new or different. Um, you know, the personnel, you have a better book on the personnel because you've already played them. Um, in addition to what you already knew going into the game, you witness what they could do. And so now it's just a matter for us of, of uh, locking in on scout report. Today will come out and be a very light day for us. And, um, you know, I'm glad it's a 9 o'clock game, just a little more rest time for the guys. Is Duke potentially the most physically gifted team you guys have played this season? They are... Without question, their, their starting five is probably the most gifted starting five that we've seen. Um, when you talk about all the contributions that those five guys make, they've got some talented players on the bench too. But um, you know, this team, their starting five carries the majority of the week. I saw uh, I saw Evan breaking down film last night as I left the arena. Uh, what did you see from the tape from last night that kind of stuck out to you that you might not have seen immediately in the post game? Um, We've got to do a better job of finishing possessions. I think they're like four or five possessions a half um, that if we tighten up, we're going to have different outcomes in the ball game. And um, that's something that, you know, we've got to continue to, to stress trying to win each and every possession. How tough is it to play UVA just last night and have to turn around and play Duke uh, two days later? Um, well, all the guys, well, not all the guys, I can't stereotype every single basketball player playing college basketball. But if you want to be a pro, this is what it is. So, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, what did you learn from the last game against Duke that you think will help you tomorrow night? Well, just a better book on the personnel. You know, we we had a pretty good book on them um, going into it. Uh, didn't knew Carter could step out on the perimeter and make jump shots. Uh, I think he's made 10 threes on the year. So we've got to get out there to him and not let him shoot any uncontested dare shots. Bagley, we just got to continue to make work. Um, you know, Grayson is the elder statesman on, on this team, and the last time that we played him, he had a really good complete ball game, didn't score the ball, but rebounded it and had a lot of assists, so that was a big impact. So um, Trenton Duvall was really special as well. So we just got to come out and make those guys work on both ends of the floor. We got to make sure they shoot contested shots, and then we got to do a great job of boxing out and pursuing the ball. Not to say... Duke is a bad defensive team or Virginia is a bad offensive team, but is this about as polar opposite as you can go stylistically? Um, it might look like that to a certain extent, but Virginia's ball moves are probably some of the best ball moves in the country. You know, in terms of the ball getting from one side of the court to the other and player movement. So they kind of get a knock or been stereotyped as a team that doesn't play fast. They don't score a lot of points, but they play extremely fast, especially if you look at that half-court wheel action that those guys are always moving, especially those three perimeter players. Um, you know, the Duke team, um, this is, you know, a different team for Coach K in the sense of playing two traditional bigs, um, but they're good. <laughs> they're really good, and um, it's working for them. And, um, you know, the pieces that around them, um, and I shouldn't say pieces, you know, Grayson is one of the best three-point shooters in our league. Trent is shooting the ball well and Duvall is one of the league leaders in assists. So those five guys in their starting lineup, like I said, carry the majority of the weight for that team. Bryant, I think, is over 10 on threes the last two games. What has, does he just need to see one go in? And... Yeah, you know, I, I'd rather him be um, 0 for 10 than 0 for 2 <laughs> from the standpoint if he's still going to take shots. Yeah. you got to be aggressive. You know, it's not going to go in if you don't shoot it. Losing streaks can't be fun for anybody. Uh, they suck. <laughs> do you do you feel any danger of of keeping your team engaged and with you right now? I mean, you got a couple more tough games on tap this week. Well, this is our league, and it's you know I mentioned earlier three or four possessions here, this half, three or four in that half, and we've got some different outcomes. But we've got to go out there and do it. And um, you know, you can't be excited to play up against the teams in this league, which is the best league in college basketball, then this isn't the league for you.